Hi everyone, Shabbat Shalom. We are in Parshat Pinchas this week in the Book of Numbers, and I want to talk to you about the three ways uh, that we see leadership brought in this week. There are three models of leadership in this week's Parsha. Uh, examples of individuals standing up and behaving with confidence and strength, really commanding respect um, and honor. Our first example is the Parsha's namesake of Pinchas. Pinchas, uh, we saw last in last week's Parsha, uh, comes in and takes a spear. He really reacts with a lot of zeal when he sees uh, members of the tribe of the children of Israel behaving in really uh, despicable ways. He goes and he takes the spear and he spears them through. Uh, he spears an Israelite and uh, a Midianite woman through the middle. Um, and he is given a reward for behaving in this way. He is, uh, he is given a blessing of peace and of eternal priesthood. Um, we see in the Midrash in Pirkei Rabbi, El Pirkei Rabbi Eliezer, um, it talks about the zeal. It says, the zeal of Pinchas. Rabbi Elazar, son of Arach, said, he arose like a great spiritual leader and he judged Israel. As it is said, then stood up Pinchas and he executed judgment. What is the meaning of this expression? And he executed judgment like a great judge. So we have this example, this priestly example, this judging example uh, in Pinchas. The second model of leadership that we have is a legal and exegetical uh, example of leadership in the daughters of Slovchad, Benot Slovchad, who come forward with this question, with this request regarding inheritance, regarding their father's inheritance, because they're all daughters. And they come to Moses with this question, and uh, Moses brings this request to God, who uh, who judges them favorably. And the uh, the Talmud in Bava Batra comes in and and teaches about this verse, uh, where we first hear of the daughters of Slovchad, saying, uh, "The daughters of Slovchad were wise women; they were exegetes." That is, they were well versed in the methodology of expounding Torah law, and they were virtuous. <clears throat> they were wise, for they spoke at an opportune moment. Moses was sitting and holding forth an exposition on the exact section of Leverite marriages, uh, which relates to their claim. And they said to Moses, if we are like a son, that is, if we are considered like a child, a seed of uh, this individual, give us an inheritance as to a son. If not, then our mother should be subject to the law of Leverite marriage. The law states that a Leverite marriage can only take place if there are no children at all. And why were they virtuous? They were virtuous because they would only marry such men as were worthy of them. Even the youngest among them was not married before 40 years of age. And this we learn from the fact that Slovchad, their father, died in the first year after the Exodus, and his daughter's petition was in the 40th year. Therefore, the youngest of them could have been less than 40 at the time. And yet, this occurred before their marriage. So we learn this in the Talmud in Masechet Bava Batra. And our third model of leadership, right, so we have the priestly in Pinchas, the legal and exegetical in Benot Slovchad, and the, finally, the prophetic in Yehoshua ben Nun, who in this week's Parsha is really given the mantle of leadership, and he will carry the children of Israel really through into the, in the land of, uh, in the promised land. Um, and we uh, learn in a Midrash that, uh, that this leadership, the connection between Moshe and Yehoshua, has to do with their styles of leadership. And it says, the elders of their generation said, the countenance of Moses was like that of the sun. The countenance of Yehoshua was like that of the moon. So the two sides uh, of leadership, Moses' radiance uh, like the sun, his face radiant coming down from his conversation, his encounter with God, um, and Joshua's leadership uh, and countenance being like that of the moon, not quite as bright as Moshe, but uh, but uh, strong leadership that will that will care for uh, the children of Israel as they go into the land. And so, as we head towards Shabbat, let's consider the ways that we enter into the holy moments that we are about to experience on Shabbat. Which rituals, right? The candle lighting, kiddush. What learning are we doing? Come join us uh, for our Mincha Mariv learning on Shabbat afternoon. Uh, and what mystical ways uh, are we experiencing Shabbat? Maybe it's in the taking the sweetness of Shabbat and bringing it into the following week at our, uh, in our Havdalah experience. There are many, many points of entry for Shabbat, and I look forward to meeting you there. Wishing you a sweet Shabbat and all the best.